Hi, I'm AJ O'Neill at Sputter RF, and I want to give a really brief rundown on Markdown. So, the best way to explain Markdown that I can think of is explaining kind of what it isn't. Um, it's for documentation, so a lot of people might use something like HTML or Microsoft Word for documentation. And those are both kind of designed with the perspective of inventing something new. So like in Microsoft Word, the way those were invented was with buttons and menus. Um, so if you want to create some formatting, you, you search for a button to do that. In HTML, it's with syntax. So if you want uh, a bulleted list, you use the bulleted list uh, tags and, and syntax. So it's going from the idea of what you want to do and then a process to get there. And Markdown is kind of done in reverse. Markdown is from the perspective of what do people already do to get done what they want and how do we turn that into a formal specification that's going to do what computers want. So whereas uh, Word and HTML are um, focused on what computers want, Markdown's focused on what people do. So here's my example. This is a header in Markdown, same way that you would write it in an email. Um, you just create some text and then you throw some lines underneath of it to underline it to say, hey, this is important. How do you do a paragraph? Well, you just write a line. How do you do make something uh, strongly emphasized, you put some stars around it. These are things that people already do in email, already do in text conversations over instant messenger. Um, you know, there's nothing really new here until we get to um, embedding media like links and images. Um, another great thing about Markdown, other than that you already know it if you write plain text emails, is that it's the most popular and well-supported document syntax. Um, the only contender that it really has is the wiki syntax used on Wikipedia, but as we all know, that's not user-friendly, not easy to understand, definitely easier than HTML, definitely a great step in the right direction, but doesn't come anywhere close to the simplicity that Markdown has. Um, that said, Markdown is meant to be simple, not to be complete, and so there's a lot of stuff you can do with other syntaxes that Markdown doesn't, and that's where something like uh, restructured text or LaTeX come into play that are still a little bit simpler than even wiki syntax but more powerful even than Markdown. Um, so no matter what language you're using, easy to find a plugin that's going to convert Markdown. There's even lang uh, plugins that will highlight code for you. So if you've got a little bit of Python and um, I'll just show this on the right right now. One, two, three, four to do a code block. And then let's say we've got def do stuff. We're going to pass in A and B. Oh, Python example, just to end that block. And then I do print hello world. See over here, we've already got syntax highlighting for it. So uh, that's a, a plugin that this particular editor uses. Um, Actually, I'll save that for later to show it in the other editor as well. Um, so most of Markdown you can guess. So the things like bulleted lists, you can either use stars or um, you can use hyphens, asterisks, or hyphens. It doesn't matter. You can mix and match them. It works the way you expect. With numbers, all you got to do is have a number and then um, a, a, a period and you don't have to even write the numbers in order. They can be in any order because we all know you cut and paste something. You don't want to go back and have to renumber it. So it just works. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is just label everything zero since it doesn't matter what number it's going to be anyway. But if you're actually going to send your markdown out in an email as well as export it to a PDF, you probably want your numbers to be right. Um, also, you can do indented numbers um, just as well. Let's see. Ah, there we go. This one requires... Some editors are a little bit different whether they require you to put a new line first or not and um, then what style they use. So this one keeps the same number style. Other um, 
other Markdown editors will change it to like Roman numerals or something like that. But anyway, just I wanted to show you that. So then um, emphasis and strong emphasis, it's either emphasis is single stars or single underscores, strong emphasis is double stars or double underscore underscores. Headings, uh, there's, there's three ways to define heading. Um, one is with the pound syntax, which I just don't think is as um, intuitive. I mean, you see people do this, but it's not as common as the uh, underline syntax or the, the dash syntax. Um, but anyway, if you need to do smaller level headings, which is much less common, really past the third header, if you're doing headers still, you're probably doing it wrong. And if you get down to the sixth header, you're definitely doing it wrong. Um, and then block quotes and code blocks, again, same way that you see people do it commonly in email or in forums, you know, when they're just using plain text, all you do is indent. And that's enough to show that it's code that should be um, either automatically highlighted or that should be put um, in in monospace font or, or what you know whatever the the plugin that the editor you have does. Um, you can also do inline code. This editor doesn't actually support it. It makes a block out of it, but most editors do. Um, and then you can do block quotes just like you can in email. I think this one, yeah, this one, oh, nope, that works the same way. This one's just a little bit weird because when you do it at the high level, it doesn't indent it. If I do it down here, you can see it does the block quote. So you can do block quotes and code blocks right in um, a list. And then the way to get out of the list is that you just need to start another sentence um, because otherwise if you just indent say four spaces and start trying to do a code block uh, depending on the editor it might pick that up or it might not because well then this happens to be at the same level of, ind of indentation that this um, text is up here and so you might think that it's just part of that text so there's a few gotchas like that um, but generally very 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 simple to use then the parts that you can't uh, guess quite as easily but are very easy to remember once you learn them are if you want um, a link to an email or a website you can put brackets on either side if you want to give it a name you put square brackets and then you put uh, parens with the address inside and if you want to put a title on it so that when you hover over it it shows the title oh that one's down here there you go, uh, no problem. And then if you're gonna be using a link a lot of times in a document, sometimes you wanna factor it out. I say don't even worry about this, but if you wanna look at it, you can. You just use square brackets both times and then the square bracket uh, definition, you can put anywhere in the document. I can put it down here, up top, up bottom, or down bottom, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, images are just as simple as links. The main difference is that you just put an exclamation mark in front and then whatever your text was becomes the alt text for the image um, and then you can still do title text for an image just like you do with the links. Uh, paragraphs I neglected to mention before but you can do a single new line and it just makes it so that it's really easy to read for you but when it gets exported to HTML or PDF it stays um, in a single paragraph but if you do two new lines that's when it splits up into a second paragraph and then uh, so that that's basically the entire syntax of markdown it's just what you would already use in an email or a forum or a chat plus a little tiny bit of syntax for links and images and uh, if you want something more than that if you want to do tables if you want to do um, classes of text and page breaks if you want to get into the more advanced stuff you can still have the comfort of markdown but a little bit more power if you go with something like restructured text or um, LaTeX. And restructured text is kind of to LaTeX what uh, Markdown is to HTML. Um, Markdown was designed to go to HTML um, and restructured text is designed to have the features and capability that you get with LaTeX. So another great thing to look into, easy to learn, 
doesn't have as good of support in terms of the community. Um, it's very Python centric. You'll find tons of excellent Python tools for that documentation. But the other tools, because it is a more um, robust specification, um, they're not as well developed in some of the other languages. But I mean, every system comes pre-installed with Python, even you know little embedded systems like your router or uh, or your uh, your external hard drive will likely have Python installed on their little embedded system that they have in them. Um, so anyway, uh, that's that on, on Markdown and I hope that you can take that, uh, the, this, this instruction and, and kind of see the utility of instead of ignoring documentation that you should be writing, just writing it ad hoc in a simple you know, notepad or gedit or whatever you're using and just give it a little bit of organization and then later on you just copy and paste it into one of these editors. Here I'll show you another one that I, I think is a little bit nicer. Uh, I've got too many tabs open. I had just the ones I wanted. But uh, yeah, so um, and this one even has a little print button. So you open up your Chrome print menu, you can select save as PDF and bam! Now you've gone straight from a simple notepad document to PDF that, you know, if you need to use PDF for whatever reason, uh, you can get it. And I really think HTML is a lot better because, you know, visiting a web page is easier than having to download a PDF and, and run it. But, you know, whatever. The, the point is, it's, it's simple, it's usable, it's great. And um, I hope that you will take that forward and and use it to better your documentation system and your company.